a few years back, diseases like tuberculosis and HIV and AIDS almost brought the country to its knees when they were first discovered. Looking back, it appears the response mechanisms adopted by the state then might turn out to be a good foundation for the country's response to deadly diseases outbreaks. Scientists note that the knowledge gained then might give Kenya an edge in dealing with coronavirus. Researchers at the Kenya Medical Research Institute saying they have made a discovery that some equipment used to test tuberculosis and HIV AIDS will come in handy in testing COVID-19. For coronavirus, these machines did not require to be changed in any way at all. The only thing that required to be changed was the reagents to be modified to be suitable for coronavirus. And in fact, the modification is not all the reagents inside, all the ingredients or components inside a reagent, no. Just a few parts, components of a reagent are required to be modified. These companies already did it because they knew that coronavirus is going to come to us and then they began shipping. Professor Matilu Mwao is a deputy director at Kemri. He says that they have made requisition of materials that will help these machines to be able to conduct COVID-19 tests. If they come tomorrow, samples will begin to be tested immediately. And I can tell you, from the samples that Kenyans have been collecting, or the health sector has been collecting every day, 600 samples, those are not sufficient samples to satisfy a machine like this one. Professor Matilu takes us through the process of testing a sample. For instance, one of a patient suspected to have contracted COVID-19. They put the sample inside here and transfer it from the primary tube, the tube that it came with, to the secondary tube the tube that is appropriate for the machine. When they transfer to the tube, then they label the tube, and then they'll put the tube in the machine, and that will be the end of the matter. In this laboratory, we join Yegon Kibet, one of the scientists carrying out a test. These are some of the samples. These are HIV samples. We are testing them for viral load. These are, we have around 400 microliters here. These samples, we load them to a sample tray, here, this way. Upon loading them, I will have to scan the sample to assign. So for I will have to scan the samples for to for the machine to be able to run. This way, the samples are supplied for the equipment to be able to test. So this I load this sample tray in here, and the equipment will be able to push them in and take it for pipetting before extraction begins. It takes at least three to four hours before the results are out. The equipment at Kemri can conduct in excess of 35,000 tests per day compared to the situation currently, which is much slower given that the tests are done manually. We are inside one of the laboratories here at the Kemri headquarters in Nairobi. What is happening is you can see quite an array of activities as uh, the scientists are conducting the basic tests. The tests that are currently being done are for HIV, but in a few days to come, these machines that you see here will be able to conduct tests for coronavirus, a major milestone that has set Kenya ahead, not just in Africa, but even in the whole world in terms of testing and efforts to combat coronavirus. There are no labs in Europe capable of testing thousands of coronavirus tests in a day. None. Because they did not invest in this kind of infrastructure. And the reason they didn't invest in this kind of infrastructure is that HIV was not such a big problem for them. So, they have other ways of testing for coronavirus, a conventional PCR, and then they have very many centers where they can test. That's why you can see they can test large numbers. But in terms of one lab doing thousands using automated systems, none. The test for coronavirus at the facility, however, is not for everyone and is currently restricted to only those who are highly at risk. What's more, Professor Matilu says Kemri has the necessary equipment to conduct adequate research on the contagion that has claimed about 90,000 lives globally. When we are looking at coronavirus, there are some things we are asking ourselves. Where did it come from? Did it... Did it come from bats, get to pangolins? Did it get into something in between and get into humans? Is that story true? Uh, was it in bats in 1830? 
How long has it been in humans? Was it from the beginning of March, the way people said here in Kenya, or have we been having it in Kenya for longer than that? All those questions, we can answer them by, with this machine. For Channel One News, I'm Safin Aching Ouma.